I recently learned about rage rooms. They're these places where you're given a helmet, safety glasses, and a baseball bat before entering a small room with old electronics, TVs, glassware, and whatnot. The goal? To destroy whatever you want, however you want. The videos from these are pretty intense as people smash, whack, and obliterate everything in sight. Glasses flying everywhere, it's awesome. Many people find it as an enjoyable way to get out some aggression and deal with what's on their mind. I think it'd be fun to try sometime. Hi, I'm Caleb White, your spiritual fitness coach today. I think a lot of us can struggle with our thoughts or our mental health. It just seems like there's so much pressure to perform today. Social media drives constant comparison and looking left and right at those around us can drive deeply into our souls that we're losing and falling behind. This can lead to having really destructive thoughts toward ourselves. This is the kind of self-talk that breaks us down, chews us up, and leaves us feeling like a shell of ourselves. It's the voice that speaks unkindly about our faults, not one of truth and grace, but one of accusation and shame. We become the old TV or the abandoned dinner plate, while the destructive thoughts we battle against is the baseball bat winding up for another blow. The book of Philippians is such a beautiful piece of scripture and so encouraging. Chapter 4 is really helpful when thinking about destructive thoughts. Starting with verse 6, it reads, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. How can we destroy our destructive thoughts? How do we fight back and cling to hope? We fix our thoughts on what is true. We direct our attention to things that are excellent and worthy of praise. What is true about you is that Jesus loved you so much that he gave his life for you so that you can enjoy being a son or daughter of the Most High God. He's so committed to your growth and so believes in you that he gave you his Holy Spirit to guide you and to be with you wherever you go. You are loved by the most important person ever, Jesus. You are cared for beyond measure. So fix your thoughts on those things which are the truest things about you. It's worth saying that if you're struggling with thoughts of self-harm or it feels like you're drowning, please ask someone you trust for help. You don't have to do this alone. Share how you're doing with those close to you or with your pastor. Did you know that darkness is the absence of light? Darkness isn't something in itself, but rather the void left behind when light is absent. When we have destructive thoughts, they can sometimes indicate to us that we are missing the truth of the grace and love of Jesus in our lives. We need a steady stream, and Scripture often reminds us of what is true of us in Christ Jesus. So let the light in by reflecting on the beautiful truth of the gospel. When you notice yourself having destructive thoughts, use that as a prompt to reflect on the goodness of God and how much Jesus loves you. Let the light in. Let those bad thoughts give way to good ones. And as you practice these things, you'll experience the peace that comes from God, the God of peace. So let the light in and go win today.